This is In the Trenches, Broadcast 64. Welcome to In the Trenches, where entrepreneurs, artists, writers, designers, inventors, warriors, and leaders share their stories of doing the hard, creative work that impacts all of our lives. Let the journey inspire you to do something worthwhile, build something bold, and create your life's work. And now, your host, Tom Morgus. Welcome back to another broadcast of In the Trenches. I'm really excited today to have Scott Levy on the call with us. Scott is actually a former Marine who then transitioned into uh, the creative field of film, both in video uh, movies, um, actually like full length, you know, motion pictures and everything like that, which is pretty incredible. And as a as a movie buff, it's it's exciting to be able to talk to him about that and kind of find out how he made that transition. But he's also done TV. He's also done video games. Um, he was recently the uh, of the voiceover for a book that uh, that I was featured in that we'll talk about a little bit later as well, which is pretty cool. And so, yeah, I'm just super excited to have Scott on the call with us today. So, Scott, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate being here with you. How do you introduce yourself? Do you say, yeah, I'm Scott. I'm, I'm an actor. Like, what's the – I'm just curious <laughs> – um, gosh, that's a good question. You know, it, it took me a long time to, to be able to say that, uh, because I really wanted to, um, uh, have some, some work under my belt. You know, there's a lot of people that they kind of come out here and they do one play and they're like, Oh, I'm an actor. And you're like, mm. yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm curious about. And to, I guess to put this in context, I should, again, my, my intro is probably poor there, but some of the stuff that Scott's done, you guys can go, if you're listening, go to IMDB and just search Scott Levy and you'll see it's a pretty, a pretty full, um, uh, an impressive resume. But most recent, I don't know if this was most recently, but the one that stood out to me was the fact that you, <laughs> I'm kind of laughing as I say this, you co-starred next to Vanilla Ice. Didn't yes. You? That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It was a really cool experience. That was, God, that was 10 years ago already now. Time flies. Yeah, but, so actually, uh, I, mean, I, I apologize. So that wasn't the most recent, was it? No, no, that was that, that premiered in 05. And uh, I, I think, it, you know, you can actually watch it on YouTube for free at this point. Um, but I'm hoping they'll, they'll put it on Netflix or something because it's funny. You know, it's it's dumb and it's a Matrix spoof and it's me and Vanilla Ice acting like idiots. But people like it and they laugh and they have a good time. So I, I hope more people get to see it. Well, I'm putting it on my to to watch list. <laughs> Good. I mean, that's awesome. How was that working with Vanilla Ice? <laughs> it was really fun. You know, there's this whole weird thing about celebrity where people sort yeah. of you see people on TV or whatever, and and you make up an opinion, you know, in, in your head of because they're that kind of caricatures, about. right? Like exactly, see them, right? right? Exactly, and and you really, you know, it's it's it's. It's kind of cool then when when you start working with people or meeting people and, you know, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. But when it is positive, it's really really great. And that was the experience I had with Rob Vanilla Ice on on the Helix because I had this whole, you know, probably like most people do. uh, Oh, he's kind of this cheesy white rapper guy. But uh, we started talking, you know, when he got there on set and we had a great time. You know, we're both grew up in Florida. And uh, both had very similar political views, which was shocking to me. I was like, wow, wow Vanilla Ice is a conservative. Who knew? Um, really? So it was kind of, <laughs> yeah. He's like a huge military supporter. In fact, wow. a couple of years ago, he was playing in Vegas. I happened to be there uh, with some, some wounded warriors and, uh, for the, uh, for the daytime Emmys. And he was playing that night and he got us all in free to the show and did like this awesome shout out, you know, uh, to the military and, and the wounded vets and the, the warriors. And it was just badass. Like I was pretty stoked. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Well, not to not to focus on that because there's actually a lot of projects I'm curious about asking you about, but let's take it back a little bit where, you know, t- tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I'm curious about, you know, your time in the Marines and why you entered the Marines and, and, and a little bit about that. Well, I joined in, in 1990, uh, right out of high school. And it was at the point where we were, uh, it was desert shield at that point. And, and everybody knew, you know, we were gearing up for this big war, um, with Iraq, you know, going to Kuwait and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't want to miss it. You know, I, I certainly wanted to be a 
a part of that, uh, much like the, this current generation. You know, a lot of guys I talk to, they say the exact same thing. They're, they're like, I couldn't wait. You know, I didn't want to miss it. Um, unfortunately, I did miss it <laughs> because the war uh, was over so quickly. Um, but I, I did it. You know, I, I served 90 to 92 as a Stinger missile gunner in the Marine Corps. It's um, my proudest achievement to date and probably will be until the day I'm gone. Um, I love being a Marine. I, I love being able to, to portray military characters in, uh, in, in film and, and media. It's certainly not why I joined. Um, but it's a cool byproduct of, of having been in. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, I feel, a you know, even though I was only in two years, I got out on a medical, I still feel a, a very strong connection to, uh, to the Marines and to the vet community and just to the military community at large. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say when you said that, like that was kind of how I felt too. Cause, uh, nine 11 happened when I was in high school and I remember thinking, well, right. I'm either, I'm going to, I'm going to enlist or I'm going to go to West point and West point was because both my brothers had gone. So I was like, really, I remember since I was like in fifth or sixth grade, I wanted to go there. So I was like, if I don't get accepted, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm enlisting. And I remember my mm-hmm. mom was like horrified by that. And uh, I, I got in, so I had, I got in, so I had to kind of postpone my, my deployment until like 2009, 10. And we were the last unit there, uh, last combat brigade brigade. And we did like all the, the rollout and stuff like that. So, but yeah, interesting. Right I, I think that's pretty common among, uh, veterans, uh, old and young alike um it's just that that want to kind of be there and to be to serve because you don't want like other people to go and do it and not be a part of it you know what i mean not be able to there to help out or whatever right absolutely there there's that and and there's the feeling of 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 having you know you don't want to miss out on on a a, a defining point of your generation um Obviously, patriotism takes yep. a takes a huge role in that, and also you know sense of justice and, and right and wrong. And in our case, it was it was Kuwait. You know, it was mm-hmm. that they had been invaded. Um, obviously, in the newer conflicts, it's that that it was us. You know, we got mm-hmm. we got punched in the face mm-hmm. pretty good. Uh, you know, it's it's weird that the last couple days uh was nine the 9 11 and watching all that footage again like it really just it stirs something inside of you yeah. it's uh it's very palpable it is strong yeah so okay so you went through this and then you, you were in the marines you got out what like it's i feel like it's pretty darn rare um or at least rare is probably the wrong word um you just don't often see uh, um conspicuously at least veterans that transition into creative fields right so film tv sure. etc so tell me about that process like did you always want to do that how did you break into that industry i feel like it's like there's these huge walls and it's like insurmountable but um so tell us a little bit about that process there are huge walls and and i'm i'm still surmounting them you know after almost you know 18 years in the business um yeah, it was. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I figured I was going to make a career out of the Marine Corps. I had been speaking with uh, with the lieutenant in my battery who was a Mustang, and uh, we were talking about getting me on the MESEP program, and I was going to go to college and you know do the officer OCS program, and uh, you know, and and then I ended up getting out on the medical, and I, you know, so you you just kind of you you're driving off base, and and you're like oh my god did that just happen like (laughs) what the hell am i gonna do with my life um i had nothing i had no plans zip i i did terrible in high school because i just wasn't interested at all and um so i really was starting from scratch and uh got home back to orlando and in a roundabout way found out about full sail university and i'd always been interested in music and bands so i went there for audio engineering i figured i'd get into the music industry while i was there found myself gravitating toward the film department and decided to stay after i got my audio degree and do the video and film degree um finished that moved straight out here to hollywood and got a job building sets in burbank swinging a hammer and i got a call from the placement department at school and they said uh, George Lucas, Skywalker Sound, is gearing up for the new Spielberg movie, The Lost World. This was '97, and uh, you know, would I be interested in, in going up there for an interview? And it was, you know, this very cinematic 
dramatic moment where I'm sweating and covered in dirt and swinging a hammer and I'm on the phone <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I would definitely be interested in that. You know, like, do they have air conditioning? Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, please. <laughs> so I immediately, you know, got myself up to just, you know, Marin County, San Francisco, uh, and, and had my interview and got the job. And I worked there for, about a year and a half, did some amazing films, Titanic and uh, Lost World and Contact. And it was just incredible, you know, working with Lucas and, and mm -hmm. James Cameron. And it was it was just amazing. But while I was there, you know, I had done a little bit of acting in film school because we all kind of put each other in our films. This was pre-internet. Um, you just used other students as the actors. And I loved it. But it was never something that I could like kind of say out loud and admit in, you know, admit even to myself. But while I was at Skywalker, you know, the, the, the actors would come up for, to do their looping sessions, ADR. And I would end up hanging out with them at work. Sometimes after work, we'd go do stuff. Uh, some of them I went skydiving with and go surfing and whatever. And I was like, man, these, these people are, they aren't any different than me. Like they're just regular people, you know, you see them up on the screen your whole life and you're like, you, you know, there's this complex that you get where you feel like, um, you know, these people are from another planet. And when that wall is broken down and you realize that they're not, it really, for me, it gave me this sense of, uh, of anything's possible. And yeah. I moved back down to LA and started doing some theater, um, joined a local theater company to see if I was even any good at it. And uh, I got some good feedback and started doing some commercials and got myself in the union and it all just kind of went from there. So yeah, I'm curious and I'm, I'm sure other people are curious too. Like when you're working in that capacity, like on these major motion pictures, number, you know, a couple questions. One, like, do you feel like at the time, like this is going to be big for like Titanic or Jurassic Park? Mm. Lost World, yeah, we knew obviously because or Lost of World, yeah, Park. excuse me, yeah, we knew that we knew that that was that was going to be huge. Titanic was a whole other story, um, because every, I mean, there were if it, you can actually probably even research articles from the time that were calling, oh, this is Jim Cameron's boat bomb, <laughs> you know, love story, you know, here's the director of all these amazing sci-fi movies doing a, a love story, you know, on the the ill-fated. Um, Titanic, this thing is, is going to sink faster than the Titanic. This is a terrible idea. It's never going to work. Meanwhile, those of us that were working on it and that had seen it, the first time I saw it, it was, it was five hours long. Wow. Um, and I was blown away. I, I, I couldn't even believe my eye. You know, we felt the same way. Before the movie came in, we were like, what? First we heard we're working with Jim, and then we hear it's a love story set on the Titanic, and we were bummed. We thought it was going to be like some <laughs> awesome, right? We were like, yeah, Jim Cameron's coming in. Like, yeah. Oh, give me, give about, me aliens again. <laughs> right? We're like, oh, sweet, aliens 12. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, we get Titanic. We were like, damn. And then we saw the movie movie and we were just floored and we said my god th this thing is going to be a juggernaut and, yeah. and it did pretty good <laughs> yeah i think it did i think it set some records but i'm curious now too so the second second piece of this is um yeah how, how how was your interaction then with like uh you know cast and, and directors and stuff like that did you have personal interactions at all with with james cameron mm -hmm. or with uh with uh lucas and 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 with the actors tell, tell, tell us a little bit about that like what's that like it's it's mind blowing at first, you know, because you're you're this this kid from a little town in Florida, and and then you're in the Marines, and then all of a sudden you blink and you're standing there with with those guys, and you're you're in the room and they're making this gigantic two hundred, you know, at the time, two hundred million was unheard of, mm -hmm. and you're just like, wait a minute, you know, it's it's Alice in Wonderland, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's something I, I still, you know, I'm, I'm much more jaded now. <laughs> of course, right? 18 years later, I'm like, oh, there's, you know, so-and-so, big deal. Where's lunch? Sure. Uh, 
<laughs> but at the time it, it was, it was mind blowing. That's you know? cool. Yeah. Um, so now I'm curious, like, yeah, not to just to reminisce the whole time, but, but then sure. your, your, your career progressed and you started doing, um, I'm looking at it now and I'm seeing that you did, you, you did, you, obviously you've done movies, you've done movie, like movie production, you've acted, you've done sh- shorts, you've done TV movies, you've done video games. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell me a little bit about that. Like, is it, is it just kind of like you get like in this, like in Hollywood or in this, this area where it's just like, you just kind of, I feel like there's so many different things that you've worked on. Like, tell me about that. Like, you know, it's not necessarily your, like, I don't know. Does, is that normal, I guess, for, for people who are in Hollywood to like do a lot of different projects like this? It seems like you're on so many when I look at your, um, your bio. Yeah, it, 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 it you know, it, you always hear about the, the overnight success, right? And, and you, you never hear about the 10, 15, 20 years it took, you know, there's, there's that one breakout role of, of the person and you're like, oh my God, this, this new actor or actress that just came out of nowhere. And then you IMDb him and you're like, holy crap. And there's like 50, you know, or a hundred credits, you know, I'm, I'm definitely in that boat. I'm, I'm definitely the, the working class actor. Um, you know, I, I haven't had that big, huge breakout, but I have been really lucky. Like you were saying with the video games, I, I think that's probably where, where most people know me from. Um, and, and obviously, I don't know if you've seen the Lincoln park castle of glass video. Um, that thing has like 130 million views and, I, I sort of play – I, I got the, the role based on, on my character in Medal of Honor Warfighter. Huh. Um, and it, it's, it's a mind-blowing video. If, if you haven't seen it yet, hopefully no, I you'll haven't, check it but out. I'm, I just made a note to myself. Um, cool. It's on my list now. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, I was going to say some of the, the video games you've been a voice for, and I feel like I've I, – I wonder if I've played any of these, to be honest with you. Um, cause a little, there are some are a bit newer. Like if we had gone back like five or 10 years ago, I'm sure I had, but like Medal right. of Honor, Warfighter, um, Army of Two, Battlefield Four. I mean, that's, yeah, a lot of, a lot of war video games and stuff like that. That's, I think that's pretty funny. That's, or, or funny is the wrong word for it. Just pretty interesting. Like I, I imagine myself it's playing a video game and hearing your voice now. It's, it's, gonna, <laughs> I'd be like, I know that guy. <laughs> It's really cool. Uh, you know, it's 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 such a great experience and it gives you a lot of street cred with the kids. Yeah, totally. Um, which I love. And uh, it's it's just always a surreal experience to play a game and hear yourself because, you know, I've, I've loved video games since yeah. I was a kid. Um, and people are always, you know, how, how can I get into video games? How did you do it? What you know, what what's the secret? And there, there was no secret. My agent just called me one day and said, you know, would you be interested in going out for a video game? Uh, EA called us and they want actual real vets uh, for this game. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, of course. You know, it's kind of like when I got the call from, from Skywalk. It's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very interested. Please, like, you know, let's I'm ready to start today if, cool. if they're ready. Yeah. <laughs> and so so I got a couple questions before we segue into some of the other stuff you're doing. Um cool. Uh, with with your with the different organizations you're a part of and stuff like that, but um, mm-hmm. I'm curious a couple things. Um, when you're in a movie or you're in a uh, TV show or anything, because obviously a lot of the play- characters you play are are military related. Does it? Yes. Do you ever like? How do you deal with the fact that I feel like they always film military people wrong, like putting on their hats indoors and stuff like that? Does that like bug you at all, or do you just like? <laughs> It's, you know, it's, it's been an interesting, you know, cause when you first start, you're, you're kind of like nervous to, to tell people, um, especially depending on the size of the production, but then you come to find out that, that they really appreciate it. And ah. there probably isn't one thing that I've worked on that I haven't changed either some bit of dialogue or like you're talking about uniform stuff. Yep or whatever like they really they really want to know and that's why they hired you um and a lot of the time you know i end up sort of uh military advising even though that's yeah. not what i was hired to do but there's there's so many mistakes like you're talking about like like when people say repeat overcome <laughs> yeah. hear that constantly right in every movie and every tv show and every video game it always and i'm like out. right you're like no it's it's say again yeah. um so little tiny things like that that you and I are going to pick up on. Yeah. Um, but they they're they're very open to it. Ninety nine percent of the time, like they really want to know. You know, uh, they 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 
really want that input. So I've been very lucky. Nobody's, nobody's, you know, said get the hell off my set yet, but we'll see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I was just curious about that. And then another thing, like, cause I'm, these are just, uh, kind of goes through my head sometimes when I look at this, I feel like everybody on IMD, I, IMDB, like it's, it makes their, their heights taller. Are you actually six foot tall? I actually am. Okay, cool. I, something that I wish – both of the organization, both of the nonprofits I work with are organizations that I wish either would have existed or that I would have known about um, when I needed them. Like it would have been great when I was in to have uh, – you know, have some video games sent sent to the to uh, to the barracks, so that it's something we could all do together. And the other one I work with is the Young Marines, which I would have loved to have been a part of um, when I was a kid. And and they they take um, it's kind of like the the more badass version of the Boy Scouts, and they do amazing things. I'm actually going to uh, Modern Day Marine in Quantico next week. Um, with uh, Gunny Ermy from Full Metal Jacket, who is one of the other ambassadors for Young Marines. And we're going to uh, do some stuff with the kids. They, they take them to Iwo Jima uh, for the Iwo Jima Memorial every year. Um, they, they teach them leadership skills. They teach them... Some of them are, are, are kids that are, that are doing great. Some of them are at-risk kids that need a little more help. They need a little more guidance. But they teach them all of the amazing leadership skills that we learn in the military. And a lot of them, you know, it's, it's not like a direct pipeline to the military. A lot of them don't ever even join. But, um, but it's, it teaches them these amazing skills that help them in, in every aspect of their lives as they become adults. That's awesome. And so what, what, uh, did you reach out to these guys? Did they reach out to you? Like, how do you, how did you get involved in this? I, um, I'd done a commercial with, with one of the guys who's a youth leader with young Marines. Cool. And, um, he called me and, and told me that he wanted me, they were, they were doing their annual fundraiser and he, he had Joe Montagna and he, he wanted me as well to come out and speak to the kids. Um, you know, just about what it was like, just like what we're talking about, like right now, yep. you know, talking about being a kid and joining the Marines and transitioning to becoming an adult and, and, yep. and doing what I do now and whatever, just giving them some, some insight. So I did that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I guess some pictures and video and whatever circulated on social media and the, the national branch found me. And apparently one of the guys really high up, Bob Borka, his son, uh, was a fan. He'd seen me in the Castle of Glass video and loved Medal of Honor Warfighter. And they were like, boom, we, we want you to be an ambassador. And I was, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yes, please. It's awesome. Very cool. Okay. So now I'm going to ask a question that's, I, you know, it's pretty unfair, but I'm going to ask, um, for, and this could be geared towards, I think veterans or, or, or anybody, uh, how do you actually, how do you like get into this, get into the industry if, for, for, if it's a veteran or not, um, interested in like either acting or, 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 um, writing or, or doing, ba- you know, backend kind of production stuff. Like what's, what is like the actual path to do that? Like what, what do you, what do you recommend? Like in terms of lessons learned from what you've experienced, mm-hmm. um, your, your best advice. <laughs> For, for me, and, and especially, um, you know, I got to read the whole book of, of Military Veterans and Creative Careers, the, the book that we were both interviewed in, because I narrated it, obviously. Mm-hmm. And man, that thing is a wealth of knowledge. And based on my own experiences and based on everything that I read in there, because it's so fresh in my mind, I just did it last month, um, just doing it seems to be the consensus of, of what everyone who has found any measure of success, uh, that seems to be their advice. If you want to be an actor, act, go find a theater company, go make videos with your friends. Um, if you want to write, just write. That's, that's the easiest one of all. I mean, not easiest, but it's one that you can do solitary. You can do it by yourself. Uh, if you want to be a producer, a director, make movies, you know, added to that, obviously you, you have to make money and you have to keep a roof over your head, mm-hmm. but there are, are jobs that, that you can find particularly, I mean, I don't know if you can do it anywhere else. I came straight out to LA. I don't know. The world's changed a little bit since sure. then the business has changed. There's a lot of production in Arizona and Louisiana and New Mexico and, and all these other States. 
I don't know if you can do it anywhere else. For me, I had to do it here. Um, but you have to you have to immerse yourself um, in in the world that that you. And I guess true of any other business, yeah. right? If if you want to if you want to be something, do it. You know, it's kind of that fake it till you make it saying, just do it. Uh, get in there. Meet all the people you can find. There's there's veterans groups also. Um, for me, it was combat casting, um, where you can find other vets and former service members and whatever, and and you guys can trade knowledge. Now with the internet, even you know, and what you're doing and what Justin's doing, and and all these folks that have these awesome websites that all this knowledge is is there for the taking mm -hmm. like literally with a few keystrokes you can get um you know someone's 20 years of knowledge in the business you can get it at the drop of a hat awesome great advice and, and truly i think it is actually applicable across um industries and, and sure. interests because the uh, the idea of su um submersion um uh, mm -hmm. or, or immersion um, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny. I think about that, like in a language, uh, for example, I, I, I took Russian in college and I was able to actually go do a study abroad. And while you can learn a little bit from reading a book and like practicing, uh, the only way you can truly become fluent is actually like be in the culture and be using it. And so I think the same applies to, to business and careers and, and, uh, skill sets that we want to develop. The only way to truly master them is to, to be surrounded by it and to be constantly doing it day in and day out. Absolutely. And, and the lessons, you know, getting back to Justin's book, all like what you just said, all of those lessons are applicable in, in, in every, I would recommend everybody read that book because it's just, there's so much knowledge and, and so much amazing, um, just stories of so much picking yourself up and dusting yeah. yourself off and, and just bootstrap <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It's it's really good. And uh, and where can people find that? Actually, I'm I, I'm ha intending to have Justin on the uh, the podcast, but that'll be in a couple episodes um, when this actually yeah. goes, this airs. But yeah, he was talking about that. Yeah. And, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to to join you guys. Uh, yeah. For those podcasts, and we can do some more of this. But the book is available on Amazon. Uh, you can get it on iTunes, Audible. You know, for the audiobook versions. Yep. Um, it is readily available. Military veterans and creative careers. And man, I couldn't recommend it more. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate it, Scott. This is great. Um, I guess as we close out here, w number one, um, let's start with where can people uh, reach out to connect with you or check out what you're doing? Yeah, I'm on I'm on Facebook, Scott Levy. Um, Twitter, Real Scott Levy. Uh, you can check out like you did on IMDb to see some of the things I've worked on. Um, I've got some really cool projects coming up. Um, if I can do a little shameless self promotion, please do. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to ask you anyway, so that's it's easier <laughs> that way. Awesome. I appreciate it. I, I, I have a film called the submarine kid premiering in November at the Napa Valley film festival. Oh, sweet. And that is, uh, with Finn Whitrock, who was in Angelina Jolie's movie Unbroken. I don't know if you saw that one. Yep. Really good movie. Um, and he's also on that American horror story. And we play Marines in Afghanistan. Um, that is also going to be out in February on cable and video on demand and, and uh, Blu-ray and everything like that. Check it out. It's awesome. I've seen it. It's about the struggles of vets coming home, and it's done really well, and they actually hired vets which is something that the rest of Hollywood could really take a lesson to, mm -hmm. you know, could really learn a good lesson in, yeah. um, like, like we were just talking about yeah. with, with the military advising stuff. And the other thing coming out is in Dece on December 11th, a video game called The Devil's Third, which is going to be on PC and Wii U. And uh, I play a badass Delta operator in that game and it's about what would happen if all the satellites went out of alignment and um you know sort of an emp sort of a post post-apocalyptic i guess if you will um but it looks pretty badass 
Awesome. Well, I will make sure this is actually all linked up in the show notes and everything that we got over. So I'm sure this one will have a lot of links to a lot of cool stuff for people to, to check out. And I'm definitely going to check out that movie when it comes out. I'm actually going to be doing some some research into some of the other stuff you've done um, after this because it just it, I find it very fascinating. Castle of Glass. Uh, that's the one you yes. mentioned. I'm, I'm yeah, excited to go check that out. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really dig it. It's It's really well done. Cool. Um, yeah, man. Actually, that's I, I think that wraps it up then for us. And I just want to say thank you so much for, for being generous with your time uh, and, and coming on the show and telling us a little bit about what it's like to um, to, to enter this, you know, enter, enter the, the creative fields of, of film and, and video games and stuff like that. And, and thank you for your service. And yeah, man, it was awesome talking to you. You as well. Thank you for your service. Thank you so much for having me on. I hope we can do it again very soon. And um, I just appreciate it. Thanks so much. And that wraps up another broadcast of In the Trenches. If you'd like to check out the show notes, just head over to tommorcus.com slash podcast, where you'll find the latest broadcast. And if you enjoyed today's broadcast, please do me a favor and leave a rating and review on iTunes. That's the fastest, simplest, easiest way to support my creative work, and it would really mean a lot to me. As always, this is Tom Morcus, and if you're listening to this, you are the resistance, 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 the resistance. The resistance, 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 the resistance. The resistance, 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 the resistance.